Welcome to another installment of the Diving In series. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Wonderwear licensing, and in particular, System Platform. Now I should probably point out that this video is truly for the beginner to Wonderwear licensing. It's not our intent to make this a fully comprehensive video on all possible licensing architectures. The purpose here is to introduce you to the components of our System Platform solutions and explain some of the basic licensing and architectures. So, what is involved in understanding Wonderware licensing? Well, the exact same thing as understanding any software licensing. First and foremost, a person must understand what components are in use, which begs the question, do you understand the components of Wonderware System Platform Solutions and the functions they provide? I ask this because we found that not everyone involved in the purchasing of licensing is familiar with what the Wonderware components even do. So let's take a few minutes to understand the pieces that make up a typical system platform solution. A common scenario where Wonderware solutions are used is in the manufacturing of goods. The process may require the assembly of individual components, mixing of ingredients, or some other kind of processing in order to transform things into useful goods. And this processing of materials is automated. In other words, engineers use things like programmable logic controllers, or PLCs, to interact with the equipment through sensors and specialized other devices. These PLCs are not intelligent on their own, but simply execute programs created by engineers to do stuff like open and close valves, start and stop motors or pumps, and otherwise interact with the real world and devices. And while these PLCs are very powerful, they can't do everything. We still need people to interact with processes and equipment and to make things run smoothly, safely, and ensure the highest degree of quality. And that means we need people to be able to talk, not only to the process, but to the PLCs. So, do you know how to get data out of PLCs? Do you know that each model of PLC oftentimes speaks its own proprietary language? So if that's the case, how do you get information about the processing or assembly if everything speaks a different language? Well, just like in real life, you get a translator, and that's the first piece of the Wonderware solution. We call these translators device access servers because they give us access to the PLC devices. Now that we can communicate with these controllers, what do we do? Well, we likely want to visualize the data that comes from the PLC in an organized way so that people can easily consume it in order to supervise, guide, interact, or simply be aware of what's happening in the process. Wonderware leads the industry in this area, which is known as Human Machine Interface, or HMI, through our InTouch software. Visualizing information in real time is tremendously helpful, but oftentimes people also need to know what happened in the past to improve a process, understand it, or maybe for compliance with regulatory agency reporting requirements. In order to review what happened historically in a process, we, again, just like with the HMI, need to access and read data out of the control system. But in this case, instead of showing it to someone right away on a screen, we need to store it so people can retrieve it later. We call this process historization. Wonderware also provides this capability within the system platform solution through what we call our historian. Most basically described, it collects data, stores it, and makes data available for later retrieval and analysis. For clarification, InTouch can store historical data without the historian, but what if you have two HMI systems and you want to analyze historical data about both processes from either HMI? What if there's three or four HMIs or even 40? Do you want to modify every one of these HMI applications to be aware of all the others? Probably not. And what if you wanted to analyze the data from outside the HMI with something else like Excel? Do you want to try and connect Excel to 40 different applications? Probably not. This is why we recommend utilizing a dedicated historian so that the HMI and other non-HMI clients can access all the historical records from a single location. Yes, we have redundancy. Yes, we have high availability options, but we're keeping it simple for now, remember? The point is that having a centralized place where all process data is stored provides significant advantages, and the Wonderware historian provides this capability. The next component of the Wonderware System Platform solution is something we call Application Server. Application Server's purpose is to simplify the design of the overall system and provide robust, reliable, and scalable architectures. For example, 
Instead of defining all the data points you need to visualize within the HMI and then doing it all over again in the historian product, Application Server defines all the PLC points that both are going to need, and it automatically configures the historian for you. It can even provide graphics for the HMI with all the links and animations already predefined, greatly simplifying the HMI application. It does much more than this, but for the purpose of our licensing discussion, this will have to suffice. There is another component to System Platform Solution, uh, several in fact, like for instance, our historian client tools, which is software that makes analyzing the data stored within our historian easy and intuitive to access and visualize. But in order to understand the licensing, again, that's the point of the video, it's probably best if we just start looking at some example architectures at this point. Let's start by describing a pretty simple solution. We're gonna have one controller talking to a process. And we're gonna be using application server to simplify the system architecture and management of the overall solution. We need to be able to visualize the process, so we're going to need a HMI in touch. And the data will be historized for real time and after the fact analysis. Oh yeah, and we're going to be including the historian client tools for trending and other analysis, both within the HMI and outside of it with programs like Excel. Well, as you can see, these are all the components that we've talked about. But what about the licensing? Well, for starters, we can put all the software and their licenses on one box. For real, not kidding. If the solution is sized and configured properly, it's possible for this kind of simple solution to run everything on one computer. So the licensing needed here is simply the five pieces you see. But what if we wanted to add another visualization client, maybe a, another InTouch node? Well, that simply requires us to add one additional license, an InTouch license, which is installed on the computer or the node where InTouch will be running. Now, why don't we need all the other component licenses for the second node? Well, a single device access server could potentially provide all the connectivity or communications we need to all the controllers. Application server is simply handling the distribution of data, don't need another license for that, and the same historian will be used to store the historical records, so all we need is in touch. So this is a pretty simple scenario. Let's increase the complexity here. Let's say we have numerous controllers interacting with a variety of processes. Maybe they're identical, maybe they're different, it really doesn't matter. The system platform solution would require us to first begin communicating with these controllers, right? Which means we need a device access component to translate the proprietary language of the controllers into something understandable. Next, we're gonna use application server to coordinate the communications, visualization, historization, and more. Finally, we're gonna to need to store the data within our historian, as well as visualize it in InTouch. So, do we only need four licenses? Well, that depends. For example, do we really wanna rely on a single computer running with our device access license to handle the communications to all six processes and all the controllers related to it? While it's possible for the software to do that, it's probably going to be better if we wouldn't. It would probably be best if we distributed the communications across multiple computers. This helps ensure availability if one of the computers isn't working, like when Microsoft updates are being installed or heaven forbid the hard drive fails or something like that. This is where application server adds even more advantage. It can detect that communications have failed and automatically reroute communications through another device access server. As this places the application server component as the sole source for all data to the historian and the HMIs, it probably makes sense to distribute the application server components across more than one computer as well. You see, app server can scale from a single computer to two, five, 10, 50, 100, or whatever you want. This scaling allows the pieces of application server to be distributed across nodes and provides redundancy between those nodes. Now, of course, we'll also want to historize the data like we said, but we might want to provide a redundant historian too, if access to the historical data is critical. Finally, it's likely that multiple visualization or in-touch clients will be utilized by the people supervising all these processes. So, what are the licensing requirements here? Well, unlike our last example, I'm absolutely certain we're not talking about putting all this software and capability on a single computer, because let's face it, we already said that the communications would be handled by three systems to distribute the load and provide redundancy. So we need at least three computer nodes running the device access server software. And that means we need three licenses for the device access servers. 
Now we also need at least two nodes or computers on which to place the application server components. But these might be some of the same nodes we've already used. So we'll simply place the app server components on two of them. Also, notice that one of the app server licenses is kind of grayed out. That's because a full application server license isn't needed at every node. Only one application server license is needed for a solution, but every other node you want to distribute it across only needs a partial license, and we call that a platform. And this allows you to distribute things properly for optimal performance while reducing the overall licensing count. Our solution identified that we would also use two historians, remember, to ensure data availability to clients. And again, we can utilize existing servers, and this means two historian licenses. Finally, our topology or architecture indicates that we're going to be using nine visualization stations or in-touch nodes. So we'll need nine computers for that, each with their own in-touch license. Now is the time that I should probably point out that this is one possible architecture. This solution could be architected to run on as few as four computers or as many as 16. The point is that it doesn't impact the licensing much. Why? Because functionally, the pieces can share computing resources or be dedicated each to an individual computer. When sharing resources, you might save a little on licensing, but we specifically and intentionally design the software and our licensing to allow you to combine or distribute with little or no changes to the licensing. In this case, the only real increase is in the number of platforms we would need. So, are you curious how we could drop the total number of computers to four when we have nine HMI clients to begin with? Well, the answer is through the use of remote desktop services for the in-touch nodes. Uh, remote desktop services is what Microsoft used to call terminal services. In other words, all the licenses are installed on one box or node or computer for in-touch and then clients remotely connect to that server to visualize InTouch on their own device, whether it's an iPhone, iPad, Windows phone or tablet, an Android device or an industrialized thin client. So why should you use this kind of architecture? Well, it allows you to run InTouch on virtually any device. It simplifies installation as well as maintenance because you're only maintaining the server that's running remote desktop services. Regardless, you'll still need nine InTouch licenses. And you might wonder, oh, do you support concurrent licensing or other models? Yes, of course. The point is, we support numerous licensing architectures, and we've provided very robust flexibility to enable you to utilize the architecture that best fits your needs. We know that this is a really basic introduction to the system platform licensing. So, if you have any questions or would like to talk with someone further about this topic, please contact the Wonderware representative near you. Our contact information can be found in the Contact Us section of our website. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this Diving In series video.